Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to another episode of Tales from a Retro Gamer. Today I'm going to be talking about the 11 Nintendo NES games I spent the most time playing. The games I played a ton back in the day and that I still play now and that are just super fun. These aren't necessarily the greatest NES games of all time or even my favorite NES games of all time, although do, I do love them all because I've played them so much I wouldn't play them so much if I didn't like them but um, they're just the ones I've spent the most time with. And there's 11 titles on the list because I just could not narrow it down to 10. I just had to include all 11. And this is an approximation. I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't have the ability, the Rain Man ability to like remember exactly how much time, uh, you know, I spent playing every game, but it's an approximation, but I've spent hours and hours and hours on all of these games. And so I wanna give the, you know, I got my NES back in 87 and I've been pretty much playing it ever since. And before I get to that, very briefly, uh, I want to tell you about my Kickstarter program, which many of you already know about, because I have done a couple of videos on it, but I um, just want to give you an update. It is now almost up to $6,000 of pledges, and there are nearly 70 backers. That is just so freaking awesome. Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate it. It's really exciting. It's the first time I've ever Kickstarted anything. And, um, and so far, it's just going phenomenally well. Thank you to James Pledger for creating the awesome video that's on the Kickstarter, and to Ryan Berger, and to Blair Farrell, and to Patrick Hickey, and to so many of you guys, uh, Tommy Tallarico, all of you guys that have really helped uh, push this project. And I hate, sorry, I almost hate to start naming names because I'm leaving some of you out, but thank all of you for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Just so, uh, feeling the love from the community. Thanks, guys, and gals. All right, so let's get to the 11 NES games I've spent the most time playing over the years. Number 11, Double Dragon. Now, the NES version is missing the two-player co-op mode from the original arcade game and from the Master System version, but it's still a fantastic beat-em-up. Now, before Double Dragon came out, I had played games like Kung Fu and Chuck Norris Super Kicks, you know, sort of relatively primitive stabs at the uh, beat-em-up genre or the side-scrolling combat genre, or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, those early sort of baby steps toward this kind of game were kind of fun, but Double Dragon really cemented it. It really sort of popularized and just sort of set the template for beat-em-up games to come. And the NES version, even without the two-player uh, simultaneous mode, I loved it, played the heck out of it. I love the weapons, I love the levels, and the, um, you know, there's a little platforming in it. It's not the greatest platforming in the world, but the weapons and, and just the beat-em-up action, spectacular, the, the awesome moves you can pull off, just a great game. I received Double Dragon as a gift. I was babysitting uh, some kids for friends of mine, and I was more than happy to do that for free. Cool kids, great friends of mine, and I didn't expect anything in return. But they got me this copy of Double Dragon, and, and it was new in the box, and it's still in great condition, and it's just a prized treasure in my collection because of the memories playing it, and because of my friends who gave it to me. Just awesome, great stuff. Now, number 11 on my list is Batman. Now, back in 1989, when Tim Burton's Batman film came out, and then when the, when the game came out, I was absolutely obsessed with Batman. I had the merchandise, the action figures, a Batman hat, and you know, just tons and tons of stuff about Batman. My room, I was, um, it was 1989 and I was in my early 20s, but my room still had, you know, comic book stuff everywhere, Batman and whatnot. As you can see, I haven't grown up a ton since then, but um, it's all fun. Uh, with Batman, not only was the movie great, and it sort of had people taking serious, a lot of people still viewed superheroes through sort of the Adam West Batman lens from the 1960s TV show. Batman the movie by Tim Burton, his awesome movie, Batman, it brought Batman into modernity and it sort of took the character seriously. And you had uh, Jack Nicholson, who was just at the top of his game at the time. You know, it was great to have such a famous actor, you know, stealing scenes as the Joker. And it was just a great movie and the effects were nice. And if you look at it today, there's some parts that are a little creaky, but it's still a great movie. I still love watching it today. And it's still my favorite Batman movie of all time. I'll, I'll, I'll even like it better than the Christopher Nolan trilogy. Just love Batman. And the game is great. It's a beat-em-up with all kinds of great weapons. It doesn't necessarily follow the movie that closely, but it's still a great game. It's a great beat-em-up, and it's also got a tons of great weapons. Lots of fun. Love me some Batman. Number nine on my list is The Legend of Zelda. Now, again, this isn't the top 11 greatest NES games of all time. It's just the ones I've spent the most time playing. 
and I played Zelda a ton back in the day. As a matter of fact, I played it so much that I actually sold my complete copy of it, which I don't have anymore. I haven't replaced it because I have, I've got, the, I've got it downloaded to the Wii U so I can play it there anytime I want, but I don't have my physical copy of Legend of Zelda anymore. I'll have to, you know, I'll have to replace it at some point. Um, but, you know, at least I can still play it on the Wii U, but I, in the, you know, around 99 or 2000, I was doing eBay and I sold my copy of Legend of Zelda because I had played it to death by that point and I really wasn't, I don't know, I should have kept it. I kept most of my other NES games that I liked and for some reason I just sold it. Just, I guess, money talks. But anyway, I still have it uh, virtually on my Wii U. So it's a great game. I'm not a huge role-playing game, but Zelda is obviously an action RPG and I could get through it. I even drew some maps and I had a great time with it even though RPGs aren't really my thing. It was just just had the combat system is good and I like, you know, obtaining rupees and buying things in shops and exploring and uh, using the sword and it's just awesome. I wish I liked more role-playing games as much as I like The Legend of Zelda cuz just don't they're just it's just not my favorite genre, but I do love me some Zelda. All right, number 8. For so this is another NES game that I absolutely love, Castlevania that I don't physically own. And I this one I have no idea why. For um NES games, I would keep I would always keep the box. Now earlier ColecoVision Atari, I would throw the boxes away for whatever, you know, just cuz for room sake or whatever. At one point I threw away 80 plus ColecoVision boxes around 1999 or so. I just decided I needed more space. Always regretted that. But with the NES games, I kept those boxes. And Castlevania I should have a complete box copy, and I have no idea why I don't. It's just gone. So when I want to play Castlevania, I actually play the Game Boy Advance version. I play it on the go, and it's actually great. You know, it is the NES version, just on the Game Boy Advance. Love Castlevania. And Castlevania 3, I actually like more. But just in terms of time I've spent with the game, I've spent a lot more time on Castlevania. Because I did get it back in the day, back in 87, back when I was 20, year old, 20 years old and had a lot more time to play games than I do now. You know, now I've got a family and a wife and all these adult responsibilities. When I was 20, I was still living with my parents because they were super chill and I was going to college and doing these different things. But Castlevania, I just played it. And I love the universal monsters. I love the, the castles are gorgeous. I like climbing the stairs. <laughs> you know, back then climbing stairs was a relative novelty in 1987. Love that. Um, the weapon system is great. I love uh, the the whip is just iconic and how you can find power-ups to, you know, make it extend longer and all that. Just a great game. I love battling the Medusa heads. Just in the arching axe that you can acquire is great. Just a fantastic game, Castlevania, the original. Castlevania 2, I was a little disillusioned with because I didn't like the non-linear RPG elements. But then when Castlevania 3 came out, absolutely loved it. And I've loved the Castlevania series ever since. So Castlevania 8 is num Castlevania is number 8 of the games. The NES games I've spent the most time playing. Let's get to number 7. Now number 7, a lot of people hate number 7. And a lot of people love number seven because it is a great game. It's just super difficult. You might be knowing where I'm going here. Ghosts and Goblins. Phenomenal game. Gorgeous graphics. But holy cow, is this game agonizingly difficult. And that's one reason I spent so many hours playing it. Because it's just so hard. I played Ghosts and Goblins again and again and again because it's just so difficult to get anywhere in the game. You have to play for hours and hours and hours over and over again because you just have to, there are certain platforming segments where you just have to be so precise. There are enemies in exactly the wrong location for, you know, it's just such an, a dangerous, exciting, action-packed game. And it's just so hard, but it's so much fun. And I love the graphics. And I love the, you know, the horror theme, big horror fan. And it's just a terrific game. Um, I never beat it. I got deep into the game, level five or six. I played it a lot more back in the day than I do now. Every once in a while, I'll get it out and only get, you know, a couple, two or three levels in, maybe four. But back in the day, I did get, I believe it was level six. But man, I never could beat it because it was just too dang difficult. But man, I spent a lot of time on that game. Now, number six is a bit of a dark horse. You never see this game on anybody's top five or top 10 list. In fact, it's not one of my favorite games ever, but it is a great game that I spent a ton of time playing, Trojan. Now the title is, is kind of awkward because um, you know it's a popular brand of condom, but Trojan is a great game. 
Maybe you didn't want to talk about it with your school friends because it was, you know, kind of an awkward title, but it's still a fantastic game. It's a great sort of hack and slash game where you go through a city, a jungle, and caves, and you're, you know, fighting all these enemies like piranha, freaks, and enemies, uh, you know, thugs that will wield knives and hatchets. And it was sort of an early, you know, power-up type game for me where you could, you know, go faster and jump higher. And, you know, most of the games I had played before this didn't necessarily have power-ups. There were some, of course. Um, we just mentioned Castlevania. But um, so many, you know, games of the Atari and ColecoVision era, there just wasn't much in the way of power-ups. And so I really loved the way Trojan, you know, you could power-up your character. And just a really fun game, and I still break it out every once in a while. Again, not one of the greatest games, but just a ton of fun. And I spent a ton of time playing it. There was just something about it that connected with me. All right. Let's go to number five. Now, this is objectively, at least as objective as you can get when it comes to, you know, your favorites on a video game console, Contra. Phenomenal game, just absolutely great. Pretty much, at least for me, for the first time in a game, you could really feel like you're, you know, Rambo or Arnold Schwarzenegger in an action film, just barreling through these intense, awesome, beauty beautifully illustrated levels, just you know, just just shooting everything in sight and you're jumping and running and flipping and there's bullets all over the screen. It's it's a side-scrolling, uh, you know, it's basically a platform shooter, but it feels sometimes like a bullet hell game because there are just so many, um, you know, flying projectiles on the screen at one time. Uh, the enemies are tough and it is a very difficult game, but I managed to beat it back in the day before I even knew about the Konami code. Now this says more to how much I played the game than it does my video game skills. I'm a pretty decent uh, game player, and I've mastered a few games, but Contra, I got so good at it just because I freaking played it so much. It was just so much fun. I wanted to play it again and again, and ended up getting great at it, and I just beat it with a few lives, you know, the ones you get. And, um, you know, I didn't have the Konami code for uh, 30 extra lives or whatever. I just, I didn't even know about it. Didn't know about the code till much later. And I'm kind of glad I didn't know it back then because... That would have probably cheapened it for me, and I wouldn't have got as good at the game because I, I was just forced to get good at it if I wanted to beat it. Fantastic game, Contra. One of the all-time greats, and if I was doing a list of, you know, my favorite or, your, or the greatest 11 games of all time, Contra would definitely be top three. All right, let's go to number four. Now, this game is one, you don't really see it on top five or ten li lists too often unless it's by someone super old school like yours truly. Popeye. This is a terrific translation of the original Nintendo arcade game. I absolutely love it. It is um, what they used to call a climbing game. In more recent years, they would call it a non-scrolling platformer. It's just a great game with cartoon-like graphics, and you are Popeye, Popeye, and you can punch Brutus or Blue Toe, whatever you call him. I think he's Brutus in this game, and there's olive oil and the sea hag and Three distinct screens where you're climbing and punching, and olive oil is throwing items that you're to collect, like hearts and letters and things. Just a great, great game. Love it, and spent tons of time. And before Popeye came out for the NES, I played it on the ColecoVision back in the day. I spent a ton, a ton of time with it as well. So over two platforms, played me a ton of Popeye. Number three. Now, number three is an often misunderstood game that a lot of people don't like, but a lot of people love, like me. It really divides people because it's a shooter and it has an unconventional theme to it. It is Donkey Kong 3. Now, picture something like Galaga or maybe Gorf and put Donkey Kong graphics on it. And that really kind of puzzled people back in the day. It's like, but Donkey Kong is a climbing game or a, you know, a non-scrolling platformer. What is this shooter? My recommendation, forget the genre, forget the graphics, you know, forget the characters. Just play it as a great action game with tons of shooting. You will absolutely love it. I think so, if you can think of, view it that way. Norm, the gaming historian, did an episode, an entire episode on Donkey Kong 3, and I was really curious. To, he did it a few years ago, and I was really curious to watch that because since the game divides people so much, I was wondering what his take on it would be, and I was really glad to hear that he loved it as well. So that's number three, Donkey Kong 3. That kind of fits. All right, we're getting down to it, folks. Number two. Now, number two was one of my favorite all-time arcade games, and it is indeed one of my favorite console games. That is the original Mario Brothers from Nintendo. And they, I used to play this game back in the arcades at the mall, 
with my friend Johnny. Theoretically, it's a cooperative game, but we would try to sabotage each other. It's a non-scrolling platformer where you're hopping all around and there's creatures coming out and you uh, jump under a platform to sort of knock them over on their side and then you jump up to knock them off the screen. But you can also knock the creatures into each other and it's just a ton of fun. And I was hoping when I got the game for the NES that Johnny would come over and play it with me, but we didn't do much gaming together um, after the ColecoVision era and after we had, you know, we'd spent high school going to the arcades and stuff. But later on, uh, you know, when I got my Coleco or my NES and, you know, when I turned 20, by that time, we were spending more time just going out and going to concerts. But um, we had a ton of uh, fun with that back in the day in the arcades. And I actually like it as a solo play uh, experience. It's uh, Ideally, you play it as a two-player game just because it's so much fun to sabotage each other. As a matter of fact, we would play it. And when it's down to just you, you know, if you beat the other player or lasted longer than the other player, you can keep playing it to advance your score. But we would always just stop playing it after that because it wasn't fun anymore when it was just you. But when I think of it as a solo experience, just, you know, playing from the beginning by myself, I do like it as a high score challenge. Love me some Mario Brothers. All right, and let's get to number one. And perhaps this game was spoiled already because you can see my shirt. That is indeed the original, the great Super Mario Brothers. Now, Super Mario Brothers 3 is a uh, better game objectively, and I actually like Super Mario Brothers 3 better, but I've spent much more time playing the original Super Mario Brothers because that's the game that came with my NES when I got it for Christmas in 1987. As many of you know, my brother got me the parent level gift of an NES when I was uh, 20 in 1987. I was totally shocked. At the time, I was still playing Atari and ColecoVision and Television Odyssey 2, and I didn't jump on the NES bandwagon right away. I wasn't an early adopter, but I did get it in Christmas of 87, and wow, it was a total game changer, so to speak. Blown away by just the expanse of levels and the excellent controls, the cartoon graphics, the secrets and surprises, and I got pretty good at it pretty fast, and I beat the game within a couple of days, but I would play it again and again because it seems like I would find something new every time I played it, and that was just unprecedented. Before that, the platformers, the side-scrolling platformers, or at least the pseudo-side-scrolling platformers that sort of led the way to Super Mario Brothers were Smurf, Rescue, and Gargamel's Castle for the ColecoVision, and Pitfall for the Atari 2600. But Super Mario Brothers advanced so much further than, the, than those games, it's just, it's hard to believe. Just a legendary, genre-defining, epic game that's one of the, you know, three or four most important, most influential games of all time, Super Mario Brothers. Absolute must-play if you're any kind of gamer at all. All right, guys, let's get to the comments. It, as a matter of fact, on this video, comment what NES game have you put the most time into playing? I would love to hear it from you. Even if it's not your favorite game or one of the best, maybe you've spent more time on it than any other game. And tell me why. Why did you spend so much time playing that game? All right, with comments, let, um, a couple of weeks ago, I did an episode of Tales from Retro Gamer about meeting Walter Day, the guy who sort of popularized and helped organize esports and a good friend of mine, and he also wrote the foreword to my 100 Greatest book, and he's just a very influential figure in gaming. And Walter, I met him back in 2003 at the Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas, and so I did an episode about that, and I asked you, you guys, you know, if you had met Walter today and what kind of experiences you've had with him and what your impressions of him were. Got some cool comments, I'm gonna read a couple of them to you. Gamesar says, first time I met Walter was the first time I also met you. Got you and him both to sign your book since he did the forward. Good times. Thank you, Games are. I appreciate it. Sinister Moon says, I've met Walter as well at Kong Off 2 and Kong Off 3. Those are Donkey Kong competitions that still go on to this day. Super nice guy. He gave me some trading cards that I still have. Yeah, Walter is a, publishes trading cards for you know video game champions and other industry people. He was at one of the Rocky Mountain Pinball Showdowns in Denver, but I missed him that time around. I was still able to meet Ben Heck there, as well as Billy Mitchell for the third time. I just brought a Mr. Do arcade cabinet home not too long ago. It's not in a universal cabinet, but it plays well. Cool video, man. Yeah, in that video about meeting Walter Day, I'd also talked about Mr. Do. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for those comments. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Check out my Kickstarter. Even if you're not interested in kickstarting a book or you don't belong to the program, at least go to the link um, below and look, watch the video that James Pledger put so much time in. It's just a little two minute video about the book, a little Kickstarter video. It's pretty entertaining. I hope you guys will check it out. Thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon and on my YouTube channel here and on Kickstarter. We will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.